Starting off our list at number 10 is Rob Schneider. The hilarious actor is well known for his work in mostly comedy films. At one point in time, he was taking on big roles starring in multiple movies next to other big stars like Adam Sandler. In the 1990s and early 2000s, he was basically everywhere in the industry. But nowadays, you don't really see much of him. A lot of people have said that his time just has simply passed. Some even say that the actor was always playing the same comedic role each time, and let's face it, casting directors are probably looking for something fresh and new at this point. It doesn't help that some of his movies received really bad reviews and he was even sued for one of them. Back in 2010, investors sued him for his straight to DVD movie called The Chosen One because they wanted to recoup their investment since the movie didn't do so well. That doesn't really paint a pretty picture for other casting directors wanting to really work with him. It's been a few years since we even saw him on a screen as Rob in the TV series Real Rob. Now his movies are mainly found in the Walmart discount movie bins, but hey, some of them are still funny and I am all about a cheap deal. So who's the real winner here? here. At number 9 is Carmen Electra. At age 47, she still remains as one of the world's biggest sex symbols, claiming the title through her work in the iconic Baywatch series and Playboy. Throughout her career, she has done it all. She has a successful acting resume, a modeling portfolio, and also a music career. But over the last handful of years, her career just kind of seemed to fizzle out. After her split with Simon Cowell in 2013, she turned away from films and focused on her musical dreams. Unfortunately, that really didn't take off the way that she had hoped. We haven't seen much of her lately, she is no longer acting on her big screens or landing her songs on the billboard charts. She did find herself in the spotlight back in January of this year, 2019, but it wasn't for anything that would benefit her career in any way. Turns out she's actually involved in a scandal and is trying to sue five Las Vegas strip clubs for using her photos as advertisement without permission or payment. With that being the only type of attention she is getting from the media, her career seems to have come to a dead end. Sliding into the number 8 spot is Dane Cook. He first made a name for himself through his stand-up comedy, but like most comedians, over time he started to get into acting. He made his first on-screen appearance in the movie Employee of the Month, where he starred alongside blonde bombshell Jessica Simpson. Unfortunately, his first major role was a complete flop, and the movie received 20% on Rotten Tomatoes. He tried to redeem himself when he took on a major role in the movie Good Luck Chuck. The movie also received terrible reviews and got just 5% on Rotten Tomatoes, so even worse than the first one. People were starting to think he should pass on the whole acting thing and just stick to his stand up comedy. Not only were his movies a flop, but his comedy career also took a hit after he made an inappropriate joke back in 2012 about a mass shooting. He made a joke referencing the shooting that happened in Colorado during the screening of The Dark Knight Rises. The actor later apologized for his jokes, but some people weren't so forgiving on such a sensitive and serious topic. His personal life has also landed him being caught up in another controversy by dating a girl who is only 19 years old. They began dating when she was just 18 years old and he was 45 at the time. And the two of them have continued dating for over a year now. People have had no problem voicing their opinion on the 26 year age gap. Dane is trying to make a comeback through comedy though by doing a comedy tour this year. He admits that he will be sticking to comedy and that acting is in his past. So I guess let's see if he can still make people laugh. Next up at number 7 is Abby Lee Miller. You will know her as the very strict dance teacher on the hit TV series Dance Moms. She built her own dance studio in Pittsburgh and created a reality type TV show called Dance Moms, which has now turned into a world sensation. Pretty impressive, we got to admit. The show blew up and then expanded into Los Angeles, where they continued filming at a new studio there. One of the world's biggest dancers, Maddie Ziegler, was one of Abby's dancers on the show since she was a toddler. So basically, she can give all of her dancing skills to Abby. However, out of nowhere, while they were filming the show, we started to see that Abby was in some kind of trouble with the law. Turns out the news headlines weren't just rumors, and Abby was actually a arrested for fraud. She was caught hiding $775 worth of money that was income from the show when claiming her taxes. She was sentenced to one year in prison, which she was able to get down to just 8 months. After she completed her sentence, she was given 2 years probation and can only live in certain areas approved by her probation officer. Sadly, once out of jail, she was diagnosed with cancer in April 2018 and has faced 10 rounds of chemo and 2 major spine surgeries. Abby is currently in a wheelchair and is learning how to walk all over again. The good news is though, even if Hollywood won't hire her, she can still be her own boss. A brand new season of her reality show Dance Moms is out right now and her true fans are thrilled about it still. At number 6 is Macaulay Culkin. If you're a Home Alone fan, then this one is probably a little bit upsetting for you. The child star had a career that was off to a very strong start. After watching him kill it in the Home Alone series, he did book roles after that, but none that really put him on the map the way Home Alone did. In 2005, he 
he had drug charges against him, which he pleaded guilty to possession of marijuana and medication without a prescription. The 24 year old at the time was given a one year deferred jail sentence and was ordered to pay his fees. This was just a few weeks after he appeared in court to defend the case that was going on against Michael Jackson at the time, who had sexual assault charges against him. Culkin faced a lot of criticism for defending the man who was being accused of molesting young children. Now, in 2019, at 38 years old, he still faces the heat defending the recent documentary that came out about the Michael Jackson allegations. Culkin has no problem admitting that he spent a lot of alone time with Jackson, but nothing inappropriate ever took place. He claims that the two of them were just best friends. The two actually remained close friends over the years, and to a point where Culkin is actually the godfather to Michael Jackson's daughter, Paris Jackson. He has stayed out of Hollywood movies for years and has turned to live comedy acts instead, where he often makes jokes about the Michael Jackson allegations. You can imagine these jokes don't really go over too well with some people. Rumor has it though that you can find him in a movie called Changeland taking on a smaller role of a character named Ian. Could this be another breakthrough moment for him? Do we even care? Let me know what you guys think. Happy through the list at number five is Richard Stanley. Now this man isn't well known to some, but his story of disappearance is really interesting. If you've ever heard of the movie The Island of Dr. Moreau, he was the director and got himself fired just three days into production. According to the Telegraph, he was supposed to be escorted onto a flight from the set in Australia and fly back to Los Angeles, but when the plane arrived at LAX, he wasn't on it. Some of the extras from the movie ended up finding him a month later living in the jungle. Turns out he left the airport and made his way through the jungle by living off of coconuts, yams, and his personal marijuana stash. No, this is not a joke. What's even crazier is that he teamed up with the extras to create a plan to get back onto the movie set by dressing up as a mutant dog and blending in with the background actors. Like what? I know this story doesn't sound real you guys, but it is. I swear. Like the source is down below. Here we are at number four with Randy Quaid. He was once an Academy Award nominee actor before he disappeared from the limelight. In 2010, his disappearance started making headlines, revealing that he and his wife, Evie Quaid, fled to Canada to try and make a deal with a group called Hollywood Star Whackers, who allegedly were out to kill them. But on their escape to Canada, they got involved in some illegal activities. They used fake credit cards to pay for hotel bills, and also lived in one of their former homes, which they no longer owned or had rights to. According to CNN, and they were granted permission to stay in Canada in 2011. His wife was able to get her Canadian citizenship because her dad was born in Canada, but Randy's request was denied in 2013. The actor was finally detained by Canadian immigration officials in October 2015 and was set to be deported back to the US later that month. However, he and his wife were arrested for trying to sneak back into the US through Vermont. So it's basically just a big Show. Everyone always runs off to Canada because we're so nice over here. We'll just like let you come in. All right, guys, at number three is Margot Kidder. She was a huge star back in 1978 after starring as Lois Lane in the Superman movie. But a missing persons report was filed after she disappeared for four days back in April 1996. No one knew what was going on until police found her hiding out in the bushes of a suburban California home. Police say that she was, I quote, dirty, frightened, and paranoid with bruises and scratches all over her body. She ended up being taken to the hospital for a psychiatric evaluation. When she was discovered, it was reported that she'd actually cut off all of her own hair with a razor blade to try and alter her appearance so that people wouldn't recognize her. She later spoke on the incident saying that she suffered from manic depression and spent years working on it. Sadly, she did pass away on May 2018 at 69 years old as a result of drug overdose. This one didn't have a happy ending. Taking our number two spot on our list is Casey Kasim. The legendary radio host of American Top 40 suddenly went missing and his children reported it to the police, saying that they could not find him. It was then in May 2014 that the judge ordered that his whereabouts be disclosed. The order was made because his daughter Carrie was named his temporary conservator. She had expressed fear that he was taken by his wife Jean, who had an ongoing battle with the entire family. The radio host was suffering from Louie body disease and Carrie thought her mom took him out of the country or to an Indian reservation to seek treatment. A missing persons report was filed with the Santa Monica police, but he was reported to be found in the state of Washington not long after. Sadly, he died a month later at the age of 82, and his family drama continued on long after his death, still making headlines. At 
number one is DB Cooper. He only became famous for hijacking an aircraft in the Northwest United States back in 1971. TV show plots, songs, and books have all been based on the legend of this man for many years, including the movie Without a Paddle. The craziest part about the story is that he's actually an unidentified man. His real identity still remains a mystery to this day, so DB Cooper is just the name that he's been given. On Thanksgiving Eve back in 1971, he hijacked a plane saying he had explosives in his possession and demanded $200,000 and four parachutes in addition to a truck when they landed at the airport. Authorities did pay out the ransom and gave him the parachutes. However, before they got to the airport, he jumped from the plane 10,000 feet near Mount St. Helens in Washington state. He was never found and in July 2016, the FBI declared that they were no longer pursuing him. So basically, he could be out there walking the streets right now. He could be watching this. Hi, DB. In at number 10, Chris D'Elia. Actor and comedian Chris D'Elia just recently was part of the Netflix show called You. In the show, he played a comedian that was also grooming underage girls. Turns out he had just been method acting the whole time. D'Elia has been accused of grooming and attempting to solicit nude photographs from underage women. Girls, I guess. A woman named Simone tweeted out a screenshot of her alleged interactions with Chris, which began a thread of other women sharing their interactions with him as well. The stories are all pretty horrific considering that these girls were all underage at the time that Chris had sent messages to them, and then on top of that, people close to him like Whitney Cummings have even spoken out against him. With the Me Too movement in full force, you'll be hard pressed to have any female actor, or anyone for that matter, wanting to work alongside him ever again. In at number 9, Danny Masterson. Danny, who is best known for his role as Hyde on that 70s show, is recently charged with three counts of, hmm, I don't even know if I could say that. The R word. So far, there have been three victims that have stepped forward with separate incidents that occurred between 2001 and 2003. All the alleged crimes are believed to have taken place at his home in the Hollywood Hills. If convicted, he's looking at a sentence of 45 years to life in a state prison. For those of you who don't know, Danny is also involved with the Church of Scientology. After these charges were laid against him, Liam Remini took to Twitter with joy that the victims of Scientology were finally being heard. This is most definitely an insinuation that the church had previously covered up what Danny had been doing in order to protect their image. Although we cannot confirm these claims, it does seem like something that they would do. Back in 2017, he was fired from the Netflix show called The Ranch amid these allegations, and he is still denying any of the claims made by these women, but with that much heat on him, it's unlikely that his acting career will ever continue. In number 8, Jeffrey Starr. Jeffrey Starr has always been considered a bit of a controversial figure, but when he took over the world of cosmetics, the stakes were even higher. Although he has had plenty of feuds in the past, it was his beef with Laura Lee that became the most dramatic. To make matters worse for his career, Starr wore cornrows on one of his Jeffree Star cosmetic campaigns, and the general public was less than amused. Not too long after that, fellow YouTuber Thomas Halbert made a video about racism in the beauty community and alluded to Starr's involvement without mentioning his name directly. Jeffrey then responded with text messages that he believed would clear his name, but in return, Thomas exposed star for blackmailing his friends, which just completely flipped the table and made it a whole new conversation about the kind of dirt that Jeffrey might have on certain people. Apparently he had actually made a compilation video of YouTubers being problematic behind the scenes and would threaten to expose them if things didn't go his way. Well now things are definitely not going his way and he's for sure ending up on Hollywood's blacklist. In at number 7, Ellen DeGeneres. Ellen just recently has fired three of her most problematic producers that had allegations of abuse against them. However, I highly doubt that this action will end up redeeming her in any way whatsoever. Whatsoever. Thanks to that Kevin Porter tweet, thousands upon thousands of people have come to the realization that Ellen certainly has a mean streak. Part of what keeps people working in Hollywood can largely be attributed to how easy they are to work with. Now, with Ellen having this long rap sheet of complaints, it's hard to imagine that Hollywood won't keep her off their blacklist of celebrities. That being said, Hollywood's blacklist is more like a timeout until the bad press blows over, and then they usually try to bring these celebrities back into the fold again. I mean, look at how off the rails Mel Gibson went, and he's still acting here and there, right? No, Gibson's still acting, right? He did some bad stuff. In number six, Jesse Smollett. Jesse Smollett used to be known as the musician Jamal Lyon on the Fox drama series called Empire. At the start of January, he had gone to the Chicago police to report that he had been assaulted in the early morning hours. He claimed that two white men wearing mega hats attacked him in the middle of a polar vortex, I should mention that, and uttered racial and homophobic slurs at him. He then claimed that they poured bleach on him and tied a rope around his neck. Although after the police investigated the case, they found that Jesse had actually paid two Nigerian American brothers who worked as extras on Empire to help him stage this 
attack. Near the end of February, he was indicted for disorderly conduct for allegedly paying those brothers to stage the fake hate crime and therefore filing a false police report as a result. This scandal, however, ruined his chances with acting. In June of 2019, it was announced that Smollett would not be returning to the show even after his charges were dropped. Well, they reached a deal with the prosecutors, I should say. He had to pay his $10,000 bond and just do some community service, but he's on that Hollywood blacklist for sure. Halfway through the list, number five is Brendan Fraser. Ten years ago, he was one of Hollywood's biggest stars, but then he suddenly disappeared. For 90s babies like me, you would know him from the Mummy franchise, George of the Jungle, and the Looney Tunes. After 2008, he disappeared from starring in big movie roles, and people started saying it was due to a drug addiction. But he finally came out with the truth years later, admitting that it had to do with an incident of sexual assault. He claimed that he was once physically groped by Philip Burke, a former president of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. Burke called the allegation a, I quote, total fabrication, but still sent Brendan an apology letter after the actor complained to the HFPA. Since coming out with his story, he has slowly been returning to some acting roles, but for the most part, he just lays low at his home in New York. He actually bought a big house that overlooks a farm and has spent the last year going back and forth between home and Toronto. He loves spending time with his horses and relaxing down his little dirt road. Definitely a big step back from the Hollywood lifestyle. Here we are number four with Paula Dean. For years, you would have seen her face plastered all over the food network. This was until a lawsuit was filed against her by Lisa Jackson, accusing the celebrity chef of racial discrimination. Lisa is Paula's former general manager at one of her restaurants, so they were once very close. She claims that Paula was using the N-word when talking about African Americans. She was asked during an interview if she has ever used this word, and her response was, yes, of course, it's just what they are, they're jokes. Most jokes are about Jewish people, rednecks, black folks. We can't determine what offends another person. After her statement, networks cancelled her TV programs worldwide and stores even stopped selling her products. She disappeared from the public eye for a while but was recognized once again after making insensitive comments about another Food Network star that passed away. Chef Carl Ruiz died at the age of 44 and many celebrity chefs posted beautiful tributes in his honor. However, while appearing on the Big J show, she was asked about his death and her response was, I'm not familiar with him but I'm sorry to hear that. You know, they say the restaurant business will kill you. No pun intended. She laughed it off but no one was laughing with her. Her, and just when you thought she might get off the blacklist, she done did it again. Dug herself a deeper hole. Taking the number three spot on our list is J.D. Salinger. Everyone who went through high school had to read the book The Catcher in the Rye, which was written by a famous author, J.D. Salinger. He sadly passed away in 2010 at the age of 91, but before that, his career took a turn and he went into hiding after being blacklisted, but we never even knew. In 2013, two authors named Shane Salerno and David Shields published a book called Salinger, which revealed the author author's crazy life and uncovered some very heartbreaking stories. Turns out he actually never spoke about his time in the World War II and he ended up checking himself into a mental institution after leaving to help him deal with what he had witnessed in the war. Once he left the institution, he actually went back into the army and participated in the denazification of Germany. But because of this, there were times that some of his books were turned down. Publishers turned him down because they thought that he was crazy. Jane Salerno said during an interview, being told that he was crazy was a great wound to him. In fact, he teared up in the room and was deeply, deeply hurt. They said that the effects of the war and being turned down as a writer sent him into this life of isolation. He disappeared from everyone and went on to live a very private life. Honestly, after hearing this story, I feel like I really underappreciated the whole Catcher in the Rye book. Like, I hated reading that. I'm pretty sure I didn't. I probably did those things where you Googled the notes and it like sums it up for you. Taking second place on our list is Lelaney, the adored Disney star from the hit TV series Lizzie McGuire. Fans started questioning where she went when she didn't show up in the final episodes of the series, and when they didn't see her return for the Lizzie McGuire movie either. In the movie, they said her character was on a family vacation in Mexico. But the real reason she went missing is because she was actually arrested and pled guilty to the possession of crystal meth. Somehow she managed to keep it all hidden during the time that it was going on. It actually wasn't until she had a warrant out for her arrest that it made headlines. She was charged with a felony after not showing up for her court appearance. After her legal issues were all sorted out, she went on to work a regular job in LA where she said it just paid the bills. It was recently announced announced that Lizzie McGuire was coming back with a reboot, so fans are wondering if maybe she will be making a return. Is she going to be invited? Will she say yes? We're going to have to wait and see. Taking our number one spot is Richard Simmons. The hilarious exercise guru taught his last exercise class in 2014, and we haven't seen him ever since. Like literally, he walked out of the Beverly Hills studio and wasn't seen publicly for over three years. A podcast was created called Missing Richard Simmons, which claimed that he was being held hostage in his Hollywood Hills home by his housekeeper, or that he was possibly 
transitioning into a woman. Rumors started spreading, but his brother Lenny Simmons came forward with a statement saying, I quote, He's not sick. These things about him transitioning into a woman are ridiculous. After 40 some odd years, he just decided that he wants to rest. He wants time to himself. The only reason he ever found himself blacklisted was because of his choice to leave and how he went about it, without any explanation at all. Fitness friend Billy Blank said in June 2019 that he thinks Richard will be making a comeback, but Richard's representative declined to comment on it. I mean, he's 70 years old now. Let the man rest. Starting off our list at number 10 is Felicity Huffman, known best for starring on The Desperate Housewives. Over the last few months, she has been involved in a scandal that has led to her arrest, and Hollywood is going crazy about it, as well as her fans. A few months ago, she was caught being involved with a college admission scam. She was accused of paying $15,000 to William Rick Singer's fake charity to help her oldest daughter, Sophia, cheat on her SATs. Paperwork shows the actress was making arrangements to pursue the scheme for a second time for her younger daughter but decided to back out. Huffman was arrested at gunpoint at her Los Angeles home Tuesday morning. She was later released on a $250,000 bond. Since then, she has been keeping the faith after pleading guilty to her involvement on April 8, 2019, but is prepared to serve time behind bars. Us Weekly recently updated us on the case and said that she is hopeful that she will be able to attend a halfway house instead of prison confinement. Waiting for her trial, she has published a final statement saying, I am ashamed of the pain I have caused my daughter, my friends, my family, my colleagues, and the educational community. I want to apologize to them, and especially, I want to apologize to the students who work hard every day to get into college, and to their parents who make tremendous sacrifices to support their children and do so honestly. Well, at least she has learned her lesson. At number 9, we have CeeLo Green, the singer that came out with that really fun hit, Forget You, and also appeared as one of the judges on The Voice. His career took his first big hit back in 2012 when he was accused of sexual battery and furnishing a controlled substance. Once he cleared his name from the battery charge, his career got somewhat back to normal. But in 2014, he was accused of giving roofies to some females and he responded to the stories with some inappropriate tweets. His one tweet said, People who have really been raped, remember, if someone is passed out, they're not even with you consciously. So with implies consent. Immediately after the tweets were sent out, he was basically blacklisted from Hollywood. CBS cancelled his show the good life and concert venues dropped him left and right. He also had to leave his role as a judge on The Voice, which was probably the most painful for everyone. He still continued his music career, but it was just never the same ever since. Just a few months ago, the singer was once again defending a racist tweet he sent out when he defended his pal Big Boy before his Super Bowl performance. On February 4th, 2019, he posted a statement apologizing and also did a live stream video with TMZ to publicly apologize. He is clearly still trying to piece his reputation back together. So having the number 8 spot is Tila Tequila. She is known for being a television and social media personality that actually won over the hearts of other people during her career. But she's always been known to get attention by putting out controversial statements on her social media. The one that really pushed her over the edge was in 2013 when she decided that Adolf Hitler was a guy that deserved to be praised. She posted a rant that was titled, Why I Sympathize with Hitler Part 1. Things got even worse when she decided to post a picture of her and her friends in front of Auschwitz, and then a picture in 2016 of her and her friends saluting like a Nazi. Her Twitter account was suspended not long after the pictures were posted, and she was removed from the reality show Celebrity Big Brother. Since then, she's been posting, trying to convince her audience that Jesus Christ is her husband. She posted saying that Jesus has revealed himself to her after his resurrection, and that she shares the same story as Mary Magdalene from the Bible. She said, I quote, Jesus revealed himself to me after his resurrection. Same like me, how I saw Jesus after I died in 2012. I've been his bride since the beginning. I even have the same mark on my stomach where Jesus got stabbed by his spleen. He revealed to me that this mark is the same as his. Basically, fans think she has just totally lost it. They aren't fighting with her on the internet, then they are just watching her for the pure entertainment. Taking over the number 7 spot is Stephen Collins. He is known for being a famous TV dad on the show 7th Heaven. He won the hearts of many people for this role on the show, but apparently he was a different person when he was offset. On the show, he played a minister, but back in 2014, the NYPD got their hands on a tape of Collins admitting that he engaged in sexual misconduct with young girls in his past. One of his victims, a 10 year old girl, reported that he would often expose himself in front of her. His wife at the time, Faye Grant, filed for divorce and later admitted, I quote, In the presence of his therapist, Stephen admitted that he engaged in a long term pattern of sexually abusing minor children, including. 
including sexually molesting three young girls over a decade ago. In 2014, the actor admitted to sexually abusing three underage girls when he was 25 years old and apologized for his actions. Channels have cancelled plans that they had to rerun the 7th Heavens TV series, and he had lost his upcoming gig at the time, which was in the comedy movie Ted 2. However, Collins was never arrested for the abuse. He did an interview with ABC News where he not only admitted to all of these incidents, but he even described them. The actor stands firm on saying that he is not a pedophile and said, I quote, I am absolutely not attracted, physically or sexually attracted to children. I feel like that is just one big contradiction. At number six is James Franco. This one is a damn shame because he had a wildly successful career with a solid group of fans to back it up. His career started to crumble back in 2014 when screenshots surfaced of him trying to rent a hotel room for him and a 17 year old girl. The screenshots on Instagram show her sharing the facts that she is underage and also shows him identifying himself with pictures, confirming that it was really him. Immediately, he was being called a variety of different names online. People were just absolutely disgusted. The press was also on top of him asking to hear his side of the story to which he apologized and simply said that he made a mistake. His career continued on after the scandal faded out, but it resurfaced in 2018 after he showed up to the Golden Globe Awards wearing a Time's Up pin. The pin was designed to show support for women who have dealt with harassment or assault, but after wearing it, he was facing a scandal on his own. Twitter blew up with different women making accusations of inappropriate or sexual behavior from the actor. Controversy started the night of the Golden Globes as women just started tweeting accusations in reference to his pin, sharing stories of how he sexually assaulted them and hashtagging cute times up pin. Interviews with the girls and also Franco started flooding the internet and we haven't seen him on the big screen ever since. Anything on his IMDb page is funded and produced by him. Since then, he's also deleted social media, which is probably for the best. Halfway through at number 5 is Natalie Maines, also known as one third of the Dixie Chicks band. The musician took her political views a bit too far when she decided to bash the President of the United States at the time, President Bush. While performing at a concert in London, she went on a rant about his plans for the war in Iraq, which caused an outburst of rage and a ton of backlash on her career. Following her concert rant, country stations across the US decided to pull their songs from their playlist after calls from listeners came in and said that their political views weren't patriotic. Not only did they pull songs, but they also banned future songs from playing on their stations. Other country artists even got involved like Reba McIntyre and Toby Keith who spoke out against the band. Keith and Natalie actually publicly bashed each other and their music to the media. This completely ended their careers and they began to receive death threats and other threats of physical harm. In 2016, Natalie admits that them making a return to mainstream country music is highly unlikely. She said, I quote, I feel like we are all tainted. I don't know if we put a tour up if people would come. I'm not gonna lie, I feel like all that backlash was just a little unnecessary. I mean, everyone has their opinions about the president no matter who it is. Here we are at number 4 with Brendan Fraser. He is best known for his roles in Bedazzled and The Mummy. He was once a very popular actor that many fans adored, but during the 2000s his career started to fade out and a lot of people were wondering why. Just last year, Brendan opened up to GQ for an exclusive interview talking about what has happened over all of his absent years. He opened up about depression after his mother's death, which led to an unhealthy lifestyle and weight gain. It wasn't until this interview that he opened up about a sexual assault incident he faced with the former HFPA president, Philip Burke, back in 2003. He said he held it in for all of these years, but felt inspired by the current Me Too movement that is going on right now. Brennan said that the HFPA has never invited him back to the Golden Globes ever since the incident surfaced. He also says no major productions are willing to hire him either. He has no problem admitting that he has found himself blacklisted in Hollywood, but also wants to voice that the reasoning is incredibly wrong and unfair. He is still booking whatever roles he can, like some episodes on the TV series, the Professionals and Doom Patrol. All right, guys. At number three is Stacey Dash, the actress and talk show host, rose to fame after her role in Clueless and on the Fox News show Outnumbered. Nowadays, she is mostly known for her very controversial views. Go figure. Back in 2008, the actress openly voted for Barack Obama for president, but then somehow made a big shift in her views between 2008 to 2012. Which is fine. Everyone has the right to their political views, but she just went a little too far when she started calling for an end to Black History. Month. In her statement to get rid of Black History Month, she explained why, saying, and I quote, We're Americans, period. That's it. People were completely outraged, mainly because this comment was followed by many other outrageous and offensive comments from the 
the actress likes speaking on the topic of transgender people. She ended up getting fired from Fox News and since then has not been able to book any big roles because she just can't seem to keep her opinions to herself. At number 2 is Isaiah Washington, the actor who is known for his role on the famous TV show Grey's Anatomy. He found himself on Hollywood's blacklist after he made some homophobic comments at the 2007 Golden Globe Awards. This is what made his career come crashing down because he was already on thin ice for insulting his co-star TR Knight with homophobic language just a year earlier. Clearly a lesson not learned. After the incident at the Golden Globes, he was put in executive counseling, but not too long into it, Grey's Anatomy decided that he was going to be fired and his contract contract would not be renewed. After being fired, the actor was asked about it and his response was, I quote, After the incident at the Golden Globes, everything just fell apart. I lost everything. I couldn't afford to have an agent. I couldn't afford to have a publicist. I couldn't afford to continue. The former television star has found a way to continue on by starring in B-list movies and any projects that he can still get his hands on. Taking the number one spot on our list is Mel Gibson because how could he not be? There was a time when Mel Gibson's career was in its prime when he starred in the Lethal Weapon franchise and Braveheart, but it seems like his time in big movies like those have come to an end. He is a solid example that one wrong move can take a person down, although he has had a few wrong moves. They all started back in 2006 when Gibson was arrested for a DUI in Malibu, California. The actor at the time said, I quote, I was loaded and angry and arrested. I guess I'm not allowed to have a nervous breakdown ever. Oh come on Mel, that's not true, we let you have another one in 2010. Who could forget his horrific fall from grace in 2010 when a series of taped phone conversations between him and his then girlfriend were released. You could hear the actor verbally attacking her with profanity, threats and racial slurs. For example, he called her an effing pig in heat and told her that he hopes she gets raped. When doing interviews about the phone meltdown, he had no problem continuing to offend people based on race, sexual orientation, gender and immigration status. Hollywood began to lose respect for the actor and so did his fans. He has continued to book some smaller films and he even financed and produces his own movies, but it's been a long time since we've seen him start in a big Hollywood hit. Don't get me wrong, he's probably incredibly well off at this point, but it would have been nice to end things with Hollywood on better terms. Starting off the list at number 10 is Jay Kwan. He made a name for himself in the music industry after rapping about everybody in the club getting tipsy. You remember? Everybody in the club get tipsy. <laughs> What's the next part? <laughs> uh, uh. Something like that, right? I don't remember, something like that. But you guys remember that was his song. Anyways, his career was on the rise the same way his songs were on the charts, but then he disappeared from the music world and the public eye altogether. His own friend and manager, Dorian Washington, revealed in March 2010 that he kept trying to call and email him and hadn't seen him since August 2009. His label issued a statement asking fans to help locate the rapper. They even set up a special Twitter account called at where is Jaquan. After all the chaos, his manager finally wrote a statement saying, I I'm very happy to let everyone know that I personally spoke with Jay Kwan today and he is okay. He was taking some time to himself as he sometimes does, not realizing that people would start to worry after a while. How could you not realize something like that? At least just tell your family. Coming in next at number 9 is Amanda Bynes. It is not a secret that she went off the handlebars back in 2012, with behavior that ended with her on Hollywood's blacklist. Just a few examples to refresh your memory. She was arrested for drunk driving, charged with a hit and run, locked herself in a West Hollywood dressing room for two hours, got thrown out of an equinox after removing her shirt and exercising in a strapless push-up bra, and photographed multiple times smoking unknown substances in her car. These headlines kept her in the limelight for a while before she basically vanished. She was out of the public eye completely and people wondered what had happened to her. Turns out she ended up getting admitted into a mental institution where she worked on her sobriety and spent some years working out all of her legal issues. Fans were thrilled to see her make a return last year in 2018 with a magazine cover story saying that she is sober and ready to get back into acting. At number 8 is Dave Chappelle. Comedy fans saw him everywhere in the early 2000s when he was starring on his comedy show Chappelle's Show. The entire show was headlined by him and he had some other comedian guests to help him out. His series was successful being nominated for an Emmy and catching the eyes of other rival networks. His representatives went to negotiate a contract for season 3 and later reported that Dave, I quote, signed a new development deal with Comedy Central that could have yielded him as much as 50 million 
dollars. After that headline made news, he went missing. No one knew what happened to him or the show and how he could just walk away from a 50 million dollar contract. Fans later learned that he was in South Africa attending a spiritual retreat. He continued to remain in hiding and focus on his personal life until he made a successful return back in 2016. Next up at number 7 is Fan Bingbing. She is one of China's highest paid stars and was in the Hollywood spotlight in 2014 after she starred in X Men Days of Future Past. Her face was everywhere and she was walking every red carpet to promote the film, but before we knew it, the media was reporting that she suddenly disappeared. Rumors started and were later confirmed that she was busted for committing tax evasion. The Global Times revealed that Fan reported an income of $1.5 million in a small contract and $7.5 million in a larger contract, which was illegally filed as tax free income. She was placed in secret detention which explains why she mysteriously disappeared out of nowhere, but she was eventually released after her company agreed to pay 130 million dollars back in taxes and fines. Once she emerged back in the spotlight she issued an apology saying, I am deeply ashamed and guilty about what I have done, my sincere apologies to you. Swiping the number 6 spot is Governor Mark Sanford. I feel like the governor counts as a celebrity. Right? I mean, like, he's really well known. Regardless, he's on this list. And back in 2009, he was the governor of South Carolina. People were completely thrown off when he suddenly disappeared for six days without telling anyone where he went. I feel like if you're a governor, you like you can't do that. After the first six days, he started telling people that he was going on a hike on the Appalachian Trail. However, he was really going to Argentina to visit his mistress, a woman named Maria Bellin Chapur. Once the story surfaced, he admitted to a secret affair and returned to the US and asked for forgiveness. Well, he kind of begged for it. And for those wondering, after the disappearance mystery was solved, his marriage did fall apart. As it should. Halfway through the list at number 5 is Nikki Blonsky, also known as Tracy Turnblad from Hairspray, where she starred alongside Zac Efron and John Travolta. The fun musical movie came out back in 2008 and put her on the map as a talented actress. After that, you might have watched her in the short lived ABC family series Huge, but that is about it. It seemed like she was going to be the next up and coming actor, but her high didn't last very long. And to be honest, there's not really much reason for it. It's not like she has been involved in some awful celebrity scandal, she's just struggled to book some roles. Since then she booked smaller roles here and there, but it wouldn't be enough to support someone as a full time income. They do not say starving artist for nothing. In 2011 the actress did an interview with E! and said that she works at a shoe store in New York City and was later hired as a cosmetologist at a hair salon. Apparently she went on to get her cosmetology license and she began working part time as a hairstylist and makeup artist in between auditions. She's kept a fairly low profile and tweeted out recently that she works these jobs to pay her bills, but she will not lose sight of of her dreams. She's still hoping to get another breakthrough moment sometime soon. Here we are at number 4 with Dustin Diamond. The actor has made a name for himself playing Samuel Powers aka Screech on the classic TV series Saved by the Bell. In later years he went into reality television starring on Celebrity Fit Club. The show follows 8 overweight celebrities on their journey to weight loss. However, while on the reality show they didn't shine him in the brightest of lights. We all know that reality TV has the bad guy or the villain and he was basically that. But after facing a ton of backlash and criticism, he threw the show under the bus and claimed and admitted that the whole thing was scripted. This is like the one thing you're never supposed to say about reality TV. Like we know that it's kind of scripted, but like we don't actually want to know that it was scripted. If that wasn't enough, two years later in 2009, he wrote a book called Behind the Bell where he talked about everything behind the scenes throughout his journey on the show Saved by the Bell. He faced a lot of heat for some of the things written in the book, like when he was saying some of the co-stars were often called to the office. The audience took that as a sexual theme but the actor blamed the editor saying his words were twisted. So it really just depends if you believe him or not. But it doesn't appear that Hollywood does. He hasn't had any credits to his name in the past few years. In spot number 3 is Taylor Lautner. We all know him as the hunky werewolf Jacob in the Twilight series, but once that came to an end he had to create a career outside of that role. We were so used to seeing him with his shirt off that seeing him take on any other kind of role was a little bit weird. Let's be honest. In 2011 he booked a lead role in the action thriller movie called Abduction, which should have been the next big thing for his career. However, the movie received mixed critics and didn't do as well as they thought it would at the box office. Since then he hasn't really booked anything that would land him on our big screen again in a franchise like Twilight. He's still booking smaller roles like the 10 episodes as Dr. Cassidy Cassade on the TV series Screen Queens, but that was back in 2016. And he also booked Dale on the TV series Cuckoo. But his last TV show ended in 2018 and there's been nothing to his name yet this year. Not really sure what he's up to these days, a lot of people kind of just forgot about him. 
And by people, I mean me. All right, guys, at number two is Logan Paul. He has been one of the most popular YouTubers for some time now, but his YouTube career took a hit when he made headlines in 2018 for a video that caused a lot of controversy. People were him and a group of friends were traveling in Japan and they went to the famously known suicide forest. He decided to vlog his journey through the forest where they happened to actually come across a dead body on their hike. In the video you can see Logan and his friends react to the dead body which is actually shown on camera. Not only was showing the dead body disrespectful but they also started laughing and making uncomfortable jokes about it. He posted the video and titled it, We found a dead body in the Japanese suicide forest. During the video Logan says, I quote, I think this definitely marks a moment in YouTube history because because I'm pretty sure this has never happened to anyone on YouTube ever. Fans were outraged and so were other celebrities who all bashed his names calling him disgusting and saying he is a horrible influence on his young fan base and viewers. He was dropped by Google's preferred ad program that enables companies to sell ads on the top 5% of YouTube's most popular creators. He told The Hollywood Reporter that it cost him over 5 million dollars. Since then there are a number of brands and companies that refuse to work with him. Luckily he is successful enough that he has gone on to fund and create his own podcast, Impulsive, which is actually a huge hit. Take our number one spot is Steven Seagal. Back in the early 1990s, he was one of the top box office attractions when it came to Hollywood movies. He was also a martial arts action figure, which is pretty freaking cool. He's mostly known for his early career with movies like Above the Law and Under Siege, killing it at the box office with his six foot five muscular frame and good looks. He was the leading man in action adventure movies at the time. But over time, his career started sinking and it seemed like audiences were just kind of getting bored with his limited acting abilities. Not only did his acting career take a hit, but in more recent years, so did his personal life and reputation. Last year in 2018, he was accused of sexual assault and rape by two different females. In January, a report was made by actress Regina Simons, who claimed that when she was 18, she was an extra on his 1994 movie On Deadly Ground, when he allegedly raped her. Another former model named Fabiola Datis came forward after, saying that he groped her during an audition back in 2002. His attorney made a statement saying that the claims were completely made up, but that didn't stop people from having their own opinions about it. The 2002 case was dropped because apparently the evidence didn't meet the requirements. He still denies everything from the 1994 case and has walked out of interviews when asked about it. He is still trying to remain in the acting world by booking smaller roles in anything that he can pretty much get his hands on, which just is not much. Ken is Monique. It has been a year since the actress rocked the industry by going head to head with Netflix, saying that she didn't get paid what other comedians did for her comedy special. Things went as far as Monique demanded a boycott against Netflix and turned down the $500,000 they offered her for the special. I'll take that $500,000. Amy Schumer got $13 million for hers to put it into some perspective for you. So I guess, yes, that is a big difference. Long story short, she caused a huge controversy saying that she didn't get paid as much because she was black. She then went on to insult about 80% of fellow entertainers in the industry who weren't supportive of her claims. And that is when the queen of daytime TV stepped in, Oprah. The two of them were once like family pretty much best friends but had an issue back in 2009 after Oprah brought Mo's family on her show without her consent. She ended up bringing her mom and her brother who Monique has openly accused of sexually assaulting her so obviously there was a lot of beef there. They were able to work things out but when it came to these more recent scandals with Netflix and the rest of Hollywood, Oprah called Monique negative during an interview and she clapped back at Oprah calling her a coward. We haven't heard much from her ever since and she hasn't acted in anything since 2016. So girl where are you at? Where are you hiding? Next up at number nine is Jared Fogle. If you don't recognize him by just his name, he was that guy that was pretty much in every Subway commercial. He was literally the pitch man for the entire company. Like that was his actual job. He got the sweet gig after losing a significant amount of weight with the help of Subway sandwiches. His weight loss story led him to being the spokesperson for all of their advertising campaigns from the years 2000 all the way until 2015. We saw his face everywhere, but then all of a sudden that quickly changed and he basically went into hiding. But once we found out why, it made sense. Some people might have noticed that he was no longer the face of Subway and questioned why until headlines came out saying that he was charged for child pornography and paying for sex with minors. He pleaded guilty to his charges and was sentenced to 15 years in federal prison. His attorneys argued that he should only have a five year sentence since the girls he had sex with were 16 and 17 years old, not young children. That did not work in his favor. Jared agreed to pay a 
total of $1.4 million in restitution to 14 different victims, and on top of that, the judge fined him $175,000. Since then, his disappearance is no longer a mystery, and he is now behind bars. Coming in at number 8 is Stacey Dash. You probably know her as the actress from the iconic movie Clueless. She was blacklisted a few years ago after her political views cost her her entire career. She's a conservative who was clever enough to write a book on her blacklisting experience and called it There Goes My Social Life from Clueless to Conservative. It all happened by one simple tweet. During the Barack Obama election, she tweeted out, Vote for Romney, the only hope for your future. She said she tweeted it out because she didn't want Obama to have another four years, they were her beliefs, and she was sticking by them. But when she woke up the next day, everything was different. She spoke about it during an interview in 2016 and said, I've been blacklisted. My agents have dropped me. I haven't auditioned in over a year because my beliefs and what I stand for. After that, she disappeared from Hollywood basically. We stopped hearing about her, but the mystery of her disappearance ended just two days ago. She was back in the headlines, but this time it was because of her mugshot. Turns out she was arrested for domestic battery after an incident with a male. So things are not looking too good for her. Sliding into the number seven spot is James Franco. The reason why he landed himself on the blacklist is really no surprise anymore. It was in the news for a while, and I have talked about it a handful of times on this channel. But for those who aren't familiar with the story, I will sum it up for you. It all started back in 2014 when screenshots surfaced of him trying to rent a hotel room for him and a 17 year old girl who he knew was underage, and screenshots show that. Of course, when the screenshots broke the internet, people were disgusted and we thought we would never hear from him again. But surprisingly, his career continued on after the scandal faded out. All was good in the hood until 2018 when he showed up to the Golden Globe Awards wearing a Time's Up pin. The pin was designed to show support for women who are victims of sexual assault and harassment. But a variety of women started tweeting accusations of sexual misconduct and assault in reference to his pin. They literally started tweeting out stories of how he sexually assaulted them and hashtagged it, hashtag cute times up pin. Since then, he's been completely MIA. We haven't seen him on the big screen, and he deleted all of his social media accounts. Anything on his IMDb accounts are small projects that he has produced himself on his own budget. His most recent project, Zeroville, just came out and it's the first time we are seeing him acting in years. However, it's already been titled the biggest box office flop of 2019, earning just $8,000 on its opening weekend in the US. Yikes. And at number six is Roseanne Barr. The actress once had her own ABC show titled after her, Roseanne, which is why it is such a shame that she lost it all by another single tweet. People are losing their careers over Twitter. Maybe it is time to delete your account. Besides her work, she's also known for being a Trump supporter, which of course has caused her some controversy. However, it was a specific tweet back in May 2018 that had her career spiral out of control. Her tweets were about Valerie Jarrett, a senior advisor to the former President Barack Obama. In her tweet, she compared Valerie to the cross between between the Muslim Brotherhood and the movie Planet of the Apes. ABC cancelled her show immediately, which was supposed to reboot the same day, coincidentally. As of January of this year, her Twitter was off limits and she moved into her mother's basement in order to get out of LA. She said that she was worried that everyone hated her and just wanted to avoid the public eye. We haven't heard or seen much from her, but the paparazzi is still trying. A more recent image service a few months ago of Roseanne looking all disheveled outside of her home in Salt Lake City, Utah. Apparently, she was trying to take a picture of the paparazzi's license plate. She looks like a damn hot mess. In number 5, Shane Dawson. I'm sorry for dragging these people through the mud repeatedly, like Shane Dawson is a perfect scenario for this, especially for this channel. We talk about Shane Dawson all the time, but if Shane doesn't fit this list, then I don't know who else does. Shane had quite the blow up recently that led to the demise of his career on YouTube and in the world of cosmetics and probably any potential for Hollywood. That door has been shut. After partnering up with Jeffree Star, who was just meant to be another one of his documentary vlogs, the two started causing trouble together. They manipulated Tony Westbrook into fighting with James Charles, and then played the victim when people found out. Then on top of that, tons of Shane's older content had come back to bite him right when all of this beauty drama started. If you want to watch a full top 10 of everything that he did that led to the end of his career, definitely check out our list on the top 10 times Shane Dawson went too far. In number 4, Chrissy Teigen. Chrissy Teigen has been branded as the queen of cancel culture. She's become well known in the Twitterverse as always taking shots at Trump and siding with far left politics. That being said, no one is perfect and Chrissy Teigen is no exception from this rule of being a human being. Despite being married to John Legend, Chrissy has largely been cast on that new Quibi app that is just 
leaking money. I mean, they are bleeding money right now. That app is brutal and it's not going to be around for very long. Nonetheless, her reason for being sort of shadow banned or blacklisted from Hollywood flicks could be attributed to the more than 60,000 tweets that she deleted. Seems a little fishy, doesn't it? I mean, flight logs showed that Chrissy had flown on Epstein's private jet to Little St. James, so as a result, the Twitterati came for her and her past tweets. People on Twitter connected her inappropriate tweets about the show Toddlers and Tiaras to the new evidence that she had visited Epstein's Pico Island. In a bizarre series of tweets from 2011 to 2014, Chrissy tweeted a pizza, going to jail over pizza, and how she really loves watching children, specifically little girls, doing the splits. Really, really deplorable stuff right there. And I hope she's on Hollywood's blacklist. In number three, Jake Paul. Saying that Jake Paul is a menace to society would be the understatement of the year. This guy was even once crowned as the reality villain for the YouTube generation by the New York Times. To add to his Scarface image, if you will, was the recent raid on his home by the FBI. At just 23 years old, his YouTube channel is just filled with pure stupidity. Paul's early involvement in the Hollywood scene was with the show Bizarre Vark, but after he was fired by Disney, his life became pranks, vlogging, and jumping on news vans. The LA Times are reported that his house was raided by the feds after he was found to be in direct connection with the looting investigation in Arizona. Although the police didn't come out with any stolen goods, they did find a ton of firearms. Like a ton. Including this assault rifle that was just leaned up against his hot tub. There is no doubt in my mind that Hollywood will never hire this guy again and on top of that, he has to be blacklisted by now. In number two, Nick Cannon. After a recent episode of Nick Cannon's podcast called Cannon's Class, Viacom CBS decided to fire him after he promoted hateful speech and spread anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. In response, Nick said that he doesn't condone hate speech and his words were meant for the oppressive and racist infrastructure in America. Nick Cannon, best known for his marriage to Mariah Carey, also created the show Wild N' Out. However, that show will be coming to an end after 15 seasons. You can tell that Nick is going to be blacklisted by Hollywood though after Viacom released this statement. While we support ongoing education and dialogue in the fight against bigotry, we are deeply troubled that Nick has failed to acknowledge or apologize for perpetuating anti-Semitism and we are terminating our relationship with him. Last but certainly least in our number one spot, Kevin Spacey. Kevin for a long time was by far the most demanded actor of his generation. Like that's an irrefutable fact. You can just look through his history of films and be like, this guy was in everything. His library of roles was huge and his fame made the actor seem untouchable, or at least he thought. Then an actor named Anthony Rapp came forward and accused Spacey of forcing himself on him when he was only 14 years old. Following that, 15 other men came forward accusing Spacey of a similar experience. His career was cancelled at that point, but Kevin found a way to make things worse for himself. In his apology, he took a moment to come out as gay, for which the LGBTQ community denied any association. As a result of these accusations, Spacey was fired from House of Cards and was removed from the film all the money in the world. Safe to say the only acting work he'll be doing is on his YouTube page. But there's no doubt, like most of these people, there's no doubt in my mind that we will never see Kevin in Hollywood ever again after his heinous crimes. Ever again. I took a second to think about it and I was like, no, never. That would be wild if they let him back in. Wild. Starting off our list at number 10 is Roseanne Barr. The actress and comedian is known for her work, but also known for being a supporter of Donald Trump being president. Other Trump fans will back her up, but she has been one of Hollywood's most controversial figures who went one step too far back in May 2018 when she sent out some racist tweets. Her tweets were about Valerie Jarrett, a senior advisor to the former president Barack Obama. In her tweet, she compared Valerie to a cross between the Muslim Brotherhood and the movie Planet of the Apes. After seeing the backlash she received for the Racist tweet, it was immediately deleted and she issued an apology. However, it was already way too late for that and she was just trying to save her career. ABC cancelled her show called Roseanne, which was supposed to reboot the same day. ABC's president called Roseanne's tweets and I quote, I quote, abhorrent, repugnant, and inconsistent with our values. Since then, as of January of this year, 2019, her Twitter was off limits and she moved into her mother's basement in order to get out of LA. She said she has a fear that everyone hates her and she blames ABC for ruining her life rather than having her back. Apparently her tweet was just a joke, she's a comedian, but Hollywood's blacklist isn't seeing it the same way. At number 9 is Martin Lawrence. The comedian hasn't been completely blacklisted from all of Hollywood, but he has been banned from one of the most popular comedy shows on television, SNL. You can imagine what kind of damage that would do to a comedian's career and you can also imagine what he had to have done to be completely banned from the show. Apparently back in 1994 when he hosted SNL, 
SNL, he decided to go a little bit off topic in his opening monologue. We don't know what he originally had planned, but we are all still hoping it wasn't what actually came out of his mouth. In his monologue, he went on a rant making disgusting remarks about the importance of female hygiene. I can't go into too much detail with this one, but let's just say he went as far as bringing up the term douching. His hosting gig was so brutal that the comedian was banned for life and he still remains at the top of their blacklist. Swiping the number 8 spot on our list is Katherine Heigl. It's been 11 years since the actress's career crumbled, or as she described it, her career betrayed her. In 2008, her career was at its peak, starring in rom-coms like 27 Dresses, which proved she was a very bankable movie star. But at the time, she was also making headlines for her work on the hit TV series Grey's Anatomy, where she took on the role of Dr. Stevens for five years. She was described in the media as being difficult because she made statements saying she was withdrawing herself from the 2008 Emmy Awards since she didn't consider the show worthy. In her statement, she said that the Grey's Anatomy material that Shonda Rhimes had given her wasn't enough, I quote, to warrant an Emmy nomination. She got a lot of backlash for her comments and found herself on the blacklist. She stopped booking major roles for years to come, but luckily has found herself as a working actress again, even if they aren't like the big movies that she was once making. Many companies in the industry will no longer work with her, and she tried to defend herself almost a decade later. Back in 2016, she went on The Howard Stern Show to discuss what actually happened and explain that she didn't feel good about her own performance and didn't mean for it to come out as an attack on the show. Reports were made that she wanted out of the contract on multiple occasions, and she ended up leaving the show in 2010 due to her feelings being hurt. Taking over our number 7 spot is Kirk Cameron. The actor got introduced into Hollywood at a very young age. He was known to be a child star appearing in many different TV shows and films at the time. He is mostly known for his role in the sitcom Growing Pains, which he starred in for 7 seasons, but also starred in movies like Listen to Me and Like Father Like Son. However, his personal life began to affect his career because of his religious Christian views. He speaks all day long about his beliefs towards religion, homosexuals, culture and more, which has landed him on Hollywood's blacklist. His religious views erupted everywhere from Twitter to his CNN interview with Piers Morgan, where he spoke about homosexuality, saying that it was unnatural and destructive. His comments have kept him from Prime TV, and his personal documentary called Unstoppable was banned from both Facebook and YouTube. And we haven't seen him in anything for years. And at number 6 is Monique. The actress and comedian first gained popularity for her stand-up shows and for playing Nikki Parker in the UPN series The Parkers which ran from 1999 to 2004. However, her biggest break came in 2009 when she played the abusive mother in Lee Daniels' film Precious. She earned tons of critical praise and even an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. After her big win, her resume has slumped and she says it is because of how she handled the 2010 Oscar campaign for the movie Precious. She said that the director called her saying that Hollywood blackballed her because she didn't play the game. He confirmed this in an interview by saying, I quote, her demands through Precious were not always in line with the campaign. This soured her relationship with the Hollywood community. The actress said she was blacklisted by powerful people because she didn't want to campaign for the movie without receiving additional pay. Fast forward to 2018, Monique stirred the pot by urging her fans to boycott Netflix for gender and racial bias, saying that they offered her a low-balling $500,000 for a comedy special, which is significantly less than the millions that Amy Schumer and other male comedians made, such as Chris Rock and Dave Chappelle. Honestly, at this point, we're all kind of just waiting to see whose list she ends up on next. Halfway through our list at number 5 is Pee Wee Herman, also known as Paul Rubens. The actor was huge for this character during the 80s as he took on two feature films and also an Emmy winning children's TV series. But his image and also his career changed drastically back in 1991. While he was on a trip to visit his parents in Florida, he ended up being arrested for indecent exposure at a movie theater. Turns out someone had spotted him masturbating during the movie and called the police. He was 38 years old at the time and pleaded no contest, but agreed to take part in a new anti-drug campaign to avoid a trial on the misdemeanor charge. After the scandal, Pee Wee toys were pulled from shelves across the nations and Rubens hid from the public eye, pretty much disappearing for the remainder of the 90s. He attempted a comeback, but more charges of sexual nature were brought against him, this time relating to child pornography. Officers seized thousands of items from a collection of vintage gay erotica, and he also faced claims of owning sexual images of children. It took yet another decade for him to come back, 
which he did in the 2016 Netflix film Pee Wee's Big Holiday. He did receive some positive responses from fans, but also received a lot of negative as they didn't agree with the decision to even bring him back. In the last couple of years, he has booked some voiceover work, but nothing that will bring him back to the spotlight that he used to have. Here we are at number four with Bill Cosby. I mean, is anyone actually surprised that he's on this list? He made news for being the actor who had over 50 people accuse him of sexual assault and misconduct. The allegations began back in 2014 when he was accused of sexual assault that took place in the mid 1960s. He has been accused by different women for rape, drug facilitated sexual assault, sexual battery, child sexual abuse, and sexual misconduct. As more people started coming forward with allegations, the alleged incident spanned from 1965 to 2018 in the US and one in Canada. After years of battling the accusations, Cosby was first found guilty on April 26, 2018, for three counts of aggravated assault. Then on September 25, 2018, he was sentenced to three to ten years in a state prison and fined $25,000, plus the cost of prosecution, which was $43,611. Numerous organizations cut ties with the actor and even revoked honors and titles that were given to him throughout his career. Media organizations pulled reruns of The Cosby Show and TV Land and NBC both ended relationships with him along with others like Bounce TV, Hulu and BET. As for life in prison, he is currently serving a sentence at a state prison near Philadelphia and apparently gets treated like any other prisoner. Alright guys, at number 3 is Kevin Spacey, another not really surprised one on this list. The two time Oscar winner is now facing felony assault charges. Before the charges, he was killing it on his Netflix series House of Cards. But then his career started to change in October 2017 when a story was published by actor Anthony Rapp accusing Spacey of making a sexual advance towards him when he was 14. After the story was published, more than 30 people came forward with allegations, accusing him of things ranging from harassment to attempted rape. The allegations brought a flood of damage control as multiple Hollywood units have distanced themselves from the actor. It was officially announced that he was fired from his Netflix hit House of Cards. Even his representation at Hollywood's prestigious creative arts agency and his publicists have dropped him from their client list. It was announced just yesterday on June 26, 2019 that Spacey is going to face off in court with one of the sexual assault accusers. William Little, who is now 18, claimed that the actor groped him in a club back in 2016. Spacey was charged with felony assault and battery, so fireworks are expected in the Massachusetts courtroom on July 8th. In our number 2 spot is Allison Mack. The actress is known best for her role in the CW series Smallville. Recently, she was facing the heat when allegations came out that she was involved with the NX IVM group, a company in New York which is labeled as a pyramid scheme, a sex trafficking operation, and a sex cult. At first, she agreed that she was involved in the program when she was younger, but says she left the group before anything illegal was happening. Reports were made saying that the female followers of the group would have sex with their leader, Keith Raniere, and get branded with his initials. On April 8th, 2019, the actress ended up changing her claims and pleaded guilty for her role in the sex slave cult. The story was released sharing that she was sobbing in the Brooklyn courtroom when she faced charges of sex trafficking, extortion, and forced labor. In her statement, she said, I must take full responsibility for my conduct. I am very sorry for my role in this case. I am very sorry to my family and to the good people I hurt through my misguided adherence to Keith Raniere's teachings. She also admitted to being part of the master slave inner circle and said she kept a female slave who, I quote, performed services on me. Allison dissected the entire cult for the court and said that it was a slave system designed to make women feel like they would suffer serious harm, like exposing their raunchy sex photos or their darkest secrets. It was basically all for power. Her sentencing hasn't been announced yet, but the two counts she pleaded guilty to carries a maximum of up to 20 years in prison. Taking the number one spot is Harvey Weinstein. I feel like I don't even have to explain this one. Like I could just say his name and you guys will just get why he's our number one spot. But since this is my job, let me fill you in on how he got blacklisted. If you don't know who he is, he is known for being one of Hollywood's biggest producers. His incredibly successful career began to crumble in October of 2017 when the New York Times reported that dozens of women came out and accused him of rape, sexual assault, and sexual abuse over a period of 30 plus years. More than 80 women in the film industry have since accused him of these acts. Of course, he immediately denied the allegations, but shortly after was dismissed from the TWC and expelled from the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. Other associations dropped his name and he disappeared from the public eye. It wasn't until May 25th, 2018 that he was arrested in New York and charged with rape and other offenses, but was released on bail. Now his lawyers have said the settlement 
settlement to resolve the lawsuits is worth $44 million. He's expected to go to trial this month, June 2019, so we are still waiting to hear what the outcome will be.